Hi friends, Steve here once again at the Los Angeles National Cemetery in Los Angeles, California. How many of you remember the classic TV show Amos and Andy? It was a very controversial American sitcom that originally aired from 1951 to 1953 and then later in reruns. And today I'm going to visit the final resting places of as many of the cast members as I can find here in the Southern California area. And I'm going to start here at the gravesite of the actor who played Andy. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and gravesites. Well, it was before my time, but I did watch it in reruns as a kid growing up. So I was happy that I was able to find Spencer Williams Jr.'s grave. He died in 1969, December 13, and I hadn't realized, but he was born in 1893. According to his Wikipedia page, Williams died at the age of 76 from a kidney ailment just down the street at the Sawtell Veterans Administration Hospital. And even though he'll probably always best be remembered for his role as Andy Brown on the Amos and Andy TV show, he was also a pioneering African-American film director who directed half a dozen of the earliest race films, as they were called at the time. And his most popular movie, the 1941 The Blood of Jesus, was called one of the 25 most important films on race by Time Magazine. And in 1991, it was the first race film to be added to the National Film Registry. To find and visit his gravesite is pretty easy. You come in on this street right here, right behind me. This is Sepulveda. The cars behind Sepulveda, that's the 405 freeway. This is a major intersection, Sepulveda and Wilshire, right at the very bottom of the cemetery there. That's Wilshire and Sepulveda, two of the main streets here in West Los Angeles. So on Sepulveda, you come in here, you see the building, and there's it's the only way to get in, at least that I've found. On that side of the cemetery, you have the older section with the, the upright headstones or gravestones. And then in this section here, they're all flat headstones as you can see. Amos and Andy was not only a groundbreaking TV show, it was also a groundbreaking and pioneering radio show. It first aired in 1928, and it was also the first syndicated radio show in the US. The very popular radio show was on the air from 1928 to 1960, making it one of the longest running radio shows in radio history. It was created by two white men, Charles Carell and Freeman Gosden, and for many years, they voiced all of the characters. For the TV show, black actors were hired to play the roles, and it became the very first American TV show with an all-black cast. The TV sitcom was very popular with both black and white audiences at the time, but timing is everything, and the series debuted just as the modern civil rights movement in America was starting to gain momentum. The National Association for the Advancement of Color People, or the NAACP, started a campaign to protest the show because it promoted negative stereotypes of black people. And since pretty much all American sitcoms make fun of and promote negative stereotypes, no matter what color the cast is, the NAACP was making an accurate comment, especially about sitcoms of that era. It definitely was not politically correct, as we would say today and there were no other African-American TV images for balance. So, for better or for worse, the popular TV show came to an end after 78 episodes. It was not seen again on TV for nearly 50 years. And today, we can look back at the show from an historical perspective and see it for what it was. A very funny, groundbreaking show with an ensemble cast of very talented actors who haven't always received the credit they deserved. Two of the actresses who played on the show are laid to rest here at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. Amanda Randolph and her sister Lillian Randolph are laid to rest here side by side in the gentleness section of the cemetery. To visit their grave sites, you enter through the front gates and make a left at the 2nd Street and drive a short distance until you see the gentleness section on the left-hand side. Amanda Randolph was a regular on the show playing Sapphire's mama. That's her on the left and Sapphire on the right. You might also remember her for her recurring role on The Danny Thomas Show as Louise the Maid from 1955 to 1964. She died from a stroke at the age of 70 in Duarte, California on August 24, 1967. And both sisters seem to have typos on their headstones. Either that or their Wikipedia pages and Find a Grave Memorial pages are incorrect. 
I'm not sure which is accurate. Both say that she was born on September 2nd, but her gravestone says September 21st. Her date of death also seems to be off by a day. Now, the birth date listed on Lillian's gravestone looks like 1904, but according to her Wikipedia and Find the Grave Memorial pages, she was born in 1898. If any of you happen to know why there are so many discrepancies on these two headstones, please let us know in the comments section below. Lillian died from cancer at the age of 81 in Los Angeles on September 12, 1980, or possibly on September 11th. I guess it depends on what source you believe is accurate. She wasn't a regular on the show, but she did appear occasionally. Two more actors from the show are buried here at Angelus Rosedale Cemetery near downtown Los Angeles. The cemetery office is closed on the weekends, so I called ahead of time during the week to get directions to the gravesite of actress Ernestine Wade, who played Sapphire. I'm a little frustrated, and you can tell I'm pretty red. It's very warm. It's nearly 90 degrees today in November. Beautiful day, but. I've been walking for an hour and a half to two hours, and as much as I love to walk, I don't really love walking in 90 degree heat. And, and especially when I end up not finding the gravesite that I'm looking for. There was no picture, no GPS, and very little information about where she was laid to rest. So I called ahead of time. I called yesterday because I knew I was gonna be here on the weekend. So the woman was very nice, and she said, oh, she's just right inside the gate. You make her right, go down to the restrooms. And she said, then you follow the path to the left. And I've been walking, like I say, for about an hour, two hours. Haven't been able to find her gravesite. And this is my second attempt trying to find her final resting place. I was here last weekend as well and looked for two to three hours with absolutely no luck. The reason I no longer drive into LA during the work week between Monday and Friday is because it typically takes between six and eight hours to drive here and back round trip. And that's just the driving time that I spend sitting in my car. And I only live about 100 miles away. The weekend commute is only about half the amount of time. So I try to only visit the LA area cemeteries on the weekends now. According to her Find a Grave Memorial page and the cemetery, her gravesite is located in section four, lot 21 and a half, Grave 3 Northwest. Not only did I search that section, but I searched every section surrounding it. I even read that originally she had an unmarked grave, and then about a decade ago, the West Adams Heritage Association purchased and placed a headstone for her, so I called them to see if they could help me with my search, but they never returned my phone calls. So if any of you watching have visited her gravesite in person, please share with me how to find it in the comments section below. Wade played Sapphire Stevens, the wife of George Kingfish Stevens. She died here in Los Angeles at the age of 76 on April 15, 1983. And I wasn't able to find a cause of death listed anywhere. Tim Moore, the actor who played Kingfish on the show, is also buried here in the cemetery. And I'm going to go see if I can find him. I do have some pictures and I do have a better idea of where he's located, but I've never been to that section before and I've never even seen that section, so who knows if I'll be able to find him, but I guess I'm just going to have to come back to find Ernestine once I can get more information. So let's go see if I can find Kingfish's gravesite. According to his Find a Grave Memorial page, he's laid to rest in Section O, which I've discovered is located just to the right of the chapel on the west side of the cemetery. So I drove completely to the opposite end of the cemetery here, right next door to the chapel, just to the right of the chapel, and I was able to find Tim Moore's gravesite. Now he was born Harry Roscoe Moore, and his gravesite is right here. And what's really cool is I just noticed that uh, you can see the Hollywood sign from his gravesite. I had no idea that you could actually see the Hollywood sign from Angeles Rosedale Cemetery. I've been here many times before and I've never noticed it. His epitaph reads, in honor of the kingfish of comedy and his loving wife. Moore died from pulmonary tuberculosis at the age of 71 in Los Angeles on December 13, 1958. According to his Wikipedia page, 10,000 fans and mourners passed his open coffin at his funeral service. The cast members from the show were there, as well as celebrities such as Groucho Marx, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Louis Armstrong, Sidney Poitier, Tony Curtis, Sammy Davis Jr., Eddie Rochester Anderson, and Andy Razeff. And reportedly, Frank Sinatra raised the funds for the funeral and burial. But the gravesite was unmarked for decades until Red Fox and George Kirby paid for his headstone. 
The Amos and Andy characters receive top billing, but I think that most viewers would agree that with his larger-than-life personality and very memorable voice and characterization, that Tim Moore's Kingfish was the true star of the show. As I mentioned, African-American composer and lyricist Andy Razif attended Tim Moore's funeral, and 14 years later was buried two graves away. So I assume they must have been good friends during their lives. It's always nice to find family members buried together, but I find it even more touching when I find good friends who are buried near each other. Razif died from cancer at the age of 77 in North Hollywood, California on February 3rd, 1973. Shortly before his death in 1972, he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Looking at his very modest headstone, most of us would never guess that he's responsible for some of the most popular songs in American history. Songs like Ain't Misbehavin', Honeysuckle Rose, In the Mood, The Joint is Jumpin', Stompin' at the Savoy, and so many others that are still popular today. Finding these two creative legends buried here next to each other has really made my day. And once again, two more actors from the show are buried together at another cemetery. Eaglewood Park Cemetery is the final resting place of both actors Jester Hairston and Roy Glenn. Glenn played a couple of different characters on the show, including an attorney, and Hairston played Henry Van Porter. And I'm gonna visit Hairston's final resting place first. His crypt is located just inside the back gates to the right in the Manchester Garden Mausoleum. To the left of the main entrance is a glass door leading into the Sanctuary of Radiance, and his crypt is located just inside the door to the left. Hairston was a singer, songwriter, and actor who appeared in dozens of movies, but he's probably best remembered, at least by TV fans, for his role as Raleigh Forbes on the TV sitcom Amen, which aired from 1986 to 1991. You might also recognize him from his regular appearances on the TV sitcom That's My Mama that aired from 1974 to 1975. Hairston died from natural causes at the age of 98 here in Los Angeles on January 18, 2000. And as far as I've been able to discover, He's the only cast member from the Amos and Andy show who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The two creators of the show both have a star, but sadly, Kingfish's Tim Moore does not. Well, I really lucked out today. I found uh, Jester Hairston and Roy Glenn, both in just a matter of minutes, and neither of them had a GPS. Actor Roy Glenn's gravesite is here in the Sentinella section on the far west side of the cemetery about halfway between the front and back gates. Glenn died from a heart attack in Los Angeles at the young age of 56 on March 12, 1971. And I'll pan around to give you a better idea of what the section looks like where he's been laid to rest. Glenn got his start in show business on radio on shows like Amos and Andy, The Adventures of Rocky Jordan, and The Jack Benny Show. He went on to appear in many movie classics such as the Jackie Robinson Story, Carmen Jones, Porgy and Bess, A Raisin in the Sun, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and many others. Another one of the central characters on the show was Algonquin J. Calhoun, played by actor Johnny Lee. According to his Find a Grave memorial page, his final resting place is unknown. If you do happen to know where he's laid to rest, please let us know in the comments section below. Lee died from a heart attack in Los Angeles at the age of 67, on December 12, 1965. Another central character on the show was Willie Jefferson, also known as Lightning. He was played by actor Nick Stewart, who also went by the name Nicodemus. Stewart died in Los Angeles at the age of 90 on December 18, 2000. He was cremated and the whereabouts of his ashes are unknown at this time. He appeared in nearly 50 movies during his long career, and in 1950, he and his wife, Edna Stewart, founded the Los Angeles Ebony Showcase Theater, where some of the biggest names in Hollywood performed for nearly 50 years. Actor Alvin Childress played cab driver Amos Jones and appears to be the only main actor from the show who's not buried here in Los Angeles. 
He died on April 19, 1986, right here in Inglewood, California, from diabetes and other illnesses at the age of 78, but he was laid to rest in Landover, Maryland at National Memorial Harmony Park. So do you remember the show? If so, please share your memories with us in the comments section down below. And this week I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporters, Arlene Rooney, Mark Mangus Sr., and Bonnie Spinst. Thank you all for your support and very generous contributions to this channel. So as always, thanks for joining me on this uh, tour. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll hope to see you next time.